Hello and welcome to another episode of Sandy Killer Projects. Uh, if you watched our last episode, you saw um, us remove the valve cover and diagnose what's wrong with the number one cylinder on the KL Jeep Cherokee 3.2 liter. Um, if not, we are going to replace the cam, the rockers, and the uh, lifters on the intake side of the right bank. Um, so far, um, all I've done is brought the car to top dead center. I've removed the spark plug in the number one position so that I could, once I got it to top dead center, I could actually verify that it's uh, pushing air up out of that spark plug hole. And then I've painted the uh, chain to match the phaser line to make sure that I don't lose position on um, these two phasers when I pull the cam off of it. So the next thing that I've done is I've loosened the bolt that attaches the phaser in. This is actually called your oil control valve. Um, all you need to do is loosen it um, because when you take off the rest of the cam, it's, it's easier to take it off as the last thing. Um, but uh, this is torqued down to 111 foot-pounds. So um, you need to make sure that you have the correct socket, which is a 36 millimeter socket. It's a huge, huge socket. Um, that uh, is what properly fits on the oil control bolt or oil control valve bolt. Um, with everything still marked in place. You can use the wedges um, to lock everything into place. They're not really required as long as you make sure that everything is going to line back up with your marks on your timing chain you haven't jumped anything. Um, the wedges are just there as a secondary safety precaution. Also, um, I've used an inch and an eighth to hold on to the camshaft to keep it from turning or moving. So uh, it's a bit of a, a push and pull to get these guys to come loose. Once it's loose, uh, then we can start working on the caps for the uh, cam itself. Just to explain a few things, uh, this is your timing mark to show that you are at top dead center. Uh, they should be both, on both cams, be vertical. Uh, you need to paint the chain to make sure they're aligned properly. On the right bank, um, there are two lines that face each other. As you can see right here, there's an arrow um, on the left bank, the two arrows will face each other instead of the two lines. So in this case, it's going to be two lines. Um, so once you have all that stuff set up, uh, make sure that your phasers are aligned with your cam on the dots on the top and that your uh, oiling holes are facing upwards on your cams. You're at top dead center on cylinder one which means the least amount of load should be on the camshaft. So the next part of what gets done to take this cam out is uh, T30 torques go into the eight bolts that hold the caps into place. As you loosen these up, because there's still um, tension on your timing chain, the cam's gonna wanna lift. Um, if you're trying to sneak uh, the rockers in and out without doing the cam, that um, is a good way to get those in and out um, but um, in this case, because the cam is flat ground, we're going to end up having to take all of this out. So now that I have um, all the cam bearing caps off, um, I'm going to show you something on them. They have um, a number for which position they go in. I take them off and keep them in the exact same order that they came out in. One, two, three, four. They say one, two, three, four on them and the direction of the front of the motor. Um, but I do this because I want to make sure that these bolts go back in the same holes that they came out of. Um, so as you can see, the cam now is loose. Um, the only thing that's holding in place is the oil control valve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this bolt off and lift the cam and pull it back while keeping this in place so that I can set it right down where it's got to go. That way I don't completely lose timing uh, or uh, chain tension. Um, also, if it does end up coming out of timing, that's why the reason you put the uh, paint on the chain to make sure that you can put um, the indent in the exact same mark position as the um, chain was sitting in originally to begin with. This is your oil control valve bolt. This is the bolt that goes into the front of the camshaft and into the phaser. As you can see, it's got a bunch of holes in it. That's why it's called the oil control valve. It's what allows the oil to move through. Okay, so this is the cam out of it. Um, show you here. Um, you can see there's um, real heavy wear in on the cam on both of the intake valves um, and it's flat spotted on the side. 
um, those rockers have definitely failed. So this is the old one. Um, then I'm going to start pulling out the rockers, which come off very easily at this point. They just lift out of place. Uh, here is one of the failed ones. As you can see, that roller wheel is not supposed to be in a down position. It's supposed to be in an up position. And as you can see, this thing doesn't even roll properly. Um, this is a complete failure of this rocker assembly. So I'm not just going to replace the, the, the two rockers that are bad. Uh, this is the next rocker that is bad. Um, as you can see, it has the same problem. Uh, the roller wheel is on the wrong side. It clicks around. Um, that is also the, the failed rocker. I'm also going to be pulling the um, lifters out of it, which are these little guys right here. Um, if I'm in here, I may as well replace all of the stuff that could potentially go bad. I don't want to take a chance of the other ones failing shortly after that. So um, these will come out, all the rocker assemblies will come out, and then we'll set the new cam back down in. I'm already starting to put things back together. Uh, let me go over a few things just so that you're aware, have numbers and stuff. So we got all of our parts from uh, Rock Auto. Rock Auto doesn't give me the ability to set up like uh, an associate's uh, setup so that you could link to all the parts. Um, the camshaft itself, I didn't try to link to the part number. I actually gave you the original uh, Mopar number in the description. Uh, these part numbers that I'm showing you are if you're going to go to Rock Auto and get the parts. Um, this is the number for the lifter. Um, this is a Mellings part. It is JB7525. And then the rocker part number is Mellings also. It's MR1332. Um, that is the, the parts that we're replacing. So as I go through and replace these, what I like to do is I like to take the lifters, the rockers, and put everything in a little bit of oil. So the uh, lifters themselves are just these little guys here. I just have a little cup with some fresh, clean oil. Dip the part down into it and then set it back into its home location, which in this case is right here. So um, I'm going to keep going through and doing that. I'll do that with the rockers also. Um, you want everything lubricated as it goes in because once the motor starts up, it's not going to get oil for a couple of seconds. You don't want to cause issue with anything as you're putting it together. Okay, so here's a new cam getting ready to go back into place. I've got all the lifters changed out, all the rockers replaced. Um, the cam, as I mentioned before, can only go in in one position. This position is uh, signified by a little dot on the top of the um, cam itself that will match up with a dot on the back of the phaser. Uh, also, anything magnetic, keep it away from this because the cam sensor has to be able to read if the cam is there. Um, so next, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down in here and I'm going to um, put the caps back on. But before I do that, um, what I do is I put a little bit of STP um, on the uh, bearing surfaces. You don't have to. Um, I do it because it's a little bit of a heavier weight oil. Uh, allows it to stay in there for just a, a short amount of time. Um, I'm also going to do that to the other side of the caps. You can just use clean fresh oil. Um, that's what they recommend. Um, I'm just old school mechanic. Bearing surfaces need good oil startup for the first time. So now that I have the new cam back in place, let me explain exactly what I did along this process. Um, number one, number two, number three, number four, go back into positions first. Um, as you bring the cam in, you take the cam at a slight angle, you line it up with your two timing marks on the top. There's a key inside of it that will allow the cam to set inside that phaser properly. Uh, that sticks out of the uh, phaser. There's a notch inside of the cam. So when you get those two lined up, uh, push it into the phaser, um, set the cam down onto its journals. Okay, so then your caps go on in order. Then um, the cam has to get torqued and it has to get torqued to a specific torque um, in a specific pattern. Otherwise you'll put too much pressure on the wrong parts of the motor. So um, you always torque uh, two, four, three, one. Um, and when uh, torquing, you torque from the inside out um, on each one. So if you were doing the other cam, you would start on two on the inside, then do the outside. And then do four inside, then outside. Three and one. Um, so uh, the torque spec is 89 inch pounds. It's a very, very small torque. Um, in pounds, it works out to like 7.41 um, foot pounds. Most torque wrenches don't go down to that small of a number. 
um, you're going to have to use an inch-pound wrench and set it at 89 inch-pounds on these T30 uh, Torx bits. So before I start putting uh, valve covers on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of that oil I had in the cup. I'm just going to lubricate everything. Um, everything needs to get um, at least a good coating of oil all the way through to make sure that everything starts up in a proper fashion and is coated in enough oil to keep it from flat spotting the cam. Next we're going to put in the oil control valve. Uh, this guy gets torqued to 111 foot-pounds. So when you put this into place and you get it tightened down, what you're going to need to do is grab a hold of the cam again. I did it with an inch and an eighth wrench, which is this one right here. Um, and then put your 36 onto your torque wrench and torque this guy down um, to 111. So next we have to uh, prep the intake manifold to go back in place. Uh, do not use the old gasket that came out of it. I have a brand new one sitting here. Uh, the part number is, I've never heard of this company, AJ USA, um, but I got it because uh, they were the fastest ones to send it to me. Uh, the part number is 1113720. Um, it is only this uh, valve cover gasket. So we're just going to take the old cover gasket out, make sure that the surface inside is clean. Then we're going to take the new gasket, we're going to work it down into this groove. So at this point, I have the valve cover back on. Remember, there are 12 uh, bolts that put the valve cover in place, they are all 8 millimeters. Um, the absolute bear of this job is fighting this valve cover down in and around everything with all the wiring still in place uh, for the car. Um, once you get it in place though, once you get it dropped, um, just remember all the torque specs from here on out are like 8 pounds, 10 pounds, 12 pounds. These bolts are supposed to go to like 8 pounds, so just lightly snug them. Uh, then um, install your cam sensor, uh, coil packs, uh, plugs for your um, phasers, uh, push your pop plugs back in place for your um, your uh, wiring harness for the coil packs and for the injectors, uh, your um, wiring harness pop plugs in the back. All right, now I've got all the parts back on the rear valve cover. Um, the one thing I did want to mention is I ended up breaking the um, PCV valve because I didn't realize it had to come out with the valve cover. Um, the one that we bought was SKV 500. It's made by SKP. SKP, like Sandy Color Projects. Not made by us. We wouldn't have things made in China. But one thing I also didn't mention is they're on the studs in the back. This stud right here has to have this little plastic ball on top of it. That is for your engine cover. So we're almost all the way back together. I want to go over where we're at at this point. Um, okay, seven, eight millimeter bolts back in place. Then um, there are the two 10 millimeters on this plate, uh, which you can see right here, that um, I had loosened so that I could get out of the way, and I also have a custom notch in this to make it easier to get off. There are also two 10 millimeters, one right here, one right here for the front. Those are all the bolts that hold it into place. So then this connector goes back into here, which is some sort of air metering sensor. Then this clip goes onto the back of the throttle body. This goes onto um, the connector for the throttle body. Right, so the last of the parts that have to go in. Um, this hose need to get put on and connected. This connector had to go onto that. Uh, air box in the back, that connector on that. Uh, flathead screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, flathead screwdriver on the three clamps for this. Um, this airline in the front. Um, this one, the horseshoe clip on ours is broken, so um, it's in there, but it's uh, taped to make sure it doesn't fall out. Um, beyond that, uh, everything on the engine is back in place, so let's give it a start. Okay, so I really probably should have started up the car from outside and uh, been here so you could hear how the motor starts up uh, when you start it up fresh like that. Um, it does start up a little rough sounding, uh, but um, as you can tell, it seems to be running good. There's no tick. Um, seems to be driving. I'm actually going to take it around the block for a test drive to get the engine cover back on it. Um, it looks like this job is done. If you've got uh, rockers you got to replace or a cam that's got to come out, um, that's how you do it. So I took it out for a test drive. Drove like a dream. Uh, got it up to 65. Drove no problem, no stumbling. Cleared out all the faults. Um, this car is ready to go. 
as always, thank you for watching. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe. And as always, that's Gunner who follows me around everywhere. Thanks for watching.